Paul. Charles Randy Sneed. Erica Burton. Sean Harley. George Knoll. Angela Resendez. Derek Jones. And Lori is taking the place of Lisa. Pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. No, I'm playing it, okay? We do or don't? I don't know what to do. So, you know, it's fun to reflect on your court thing. We did that. That's what I thought. And if it's okay, I'll just address that? Yes. Go ahead, man. Guys, on the agenda, you're going to see something that says we have a public hearing for a colonial court zoning. I'm not sure why that's on the agenda. I know that Lisa is out this week, um, at least for the last couple days. Um, but we've addressed this issue. We passed an ordinance, it was 2021-11. We passed that at the last meeting on September 15. It's in the minutes. Um, there's no requirement, no need for a public hearing. So I just think that's an error on the agenda. And I didn't get a chance, obviously, to talk with Lisa because she was gone when I saw that. I called and uh, she was not available. But I don't think we have any public hearing concerning any rezoning that's already been taken care of, done, and over with. Minutes of 8-18-21 regular session. Motion to pass in minutes of 8-18-21 regular ses session. Second. There's a motion and a second to pass the uh, minutes for 8-18-21 regular session. Is there any additions or corrections? Excuse me, that should be 9-18. Yeah. 9-18-21. Yeah, 950. 950. Okay, is there a motion to? Okay, we got a motion to second with the correction of 91521. Yes. Yes. Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Citizens input, Pat Burkett. Hey, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> got a few questions and I wonder I've never been to one of your board meetings I'm not a resident I have been a part of the community for over 20 years in the, in the business uh, I am having a tough time now and it's not been an easy time in the restaurant business uh, and it seems like we went from a friendly Argus community that supported farmers and you know people that work on their own and everything for a long time and at the present time there is no place for a farmer to park a semi a stock trailer with a truck a landscaper with a trailer unless they want to walk for two bucks and you know especially sometimes in the morning like between six and and eight and there's really nothing going on downtown I just I know that there's state ordinances and city ordinances and everything but I think that we forget that we're a farming community and we're just we're here because of a lot of farmers they've supported this community for a long time and I just I'm just looking for a little leniency on some of these parking regulations and George and I talked about it uh, about a week ago, and we came to the conclusion that during construction there wouldn't be any tickets written. But I still don't think that we're addressing where can we park some of these people in, in this little community. It's not like we're a big city or anything like that. We're, we're a farming community, and I haven't seen that. I'd like to have some discussion on that sometime. I also would like to be up to date on ADA compliance. And right now, the two handicapped spots in front of my building represent nothing because they do not comply with anything. They have two steps to get up on the sidewalk, which you're not supposed to have any. And 
if you want to go behind your vehicle in the lane of traffic, you can do that. You know, if you're in a wheelchair, or you know, there's just some things that could happen. And I don't know whether that's county, state, who who, who controls all of that. And so I <clears throat> I'd like to have some somebody look into that because that concerns me a little bit. And then because I know that we're doing things all over town, so this may be something we can work into and make everything correct, you know, the first time through. And then the third thing that I'm going to talk about is looking at your plan, and I know it's already written in stone and everything's signed and everything, but I've asked the question, if we're going to put different parking on the west side of that right now, why can't we until this project is done, go ahead and put some angle parking there instead of too long parking to, to gain a few more spots. And I've looked, the curves all line up, so you know, I know they're going to take the sidewalk back a little bit, but right now the curves all line up with what's across the street in front of the restaurants. And I'm just looking for, for me, the break room, the, the, any business downtown, on a Friday night, it's a zoo out there. And we just, uh, I'm just looking for any place I can to park. You know, right now we've got stuff tore up back here and, and the bank really doesn't want to park them back there. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a problem. And so I was thinking we could get at least, you know, six or seven more spots rather than just two. You know, while the construction's going on and until it gets done, I mean, I don't know what, I don't have a sequence on how they're doing the construction. Are they going to finish the parking lot over here? And and if they are, are they going to do the sidewalk at the same time? Because if you take the sidewalk back, that means that there's going to be no sidewalk for anybody to walk on to come down that side of the street or parking. So just a few of my concerns, and I just I'm just asking you guys to. Kind of look at it from my shoes, and you know, I mean, you know, 60% of my customer base are over 65 years of age. If you go into a restaurant on a Friday night, you're going to see more walkers and scooters and, and stuff to walk around. They depend on a lot of people in the community depend on me at least twice a day. You know, on Friday nights, it's like you know, I get a lot of different people from out of town. I draw from Mishawaka, South Bend, Warsaw. Over, I mean, all over. And if we gain, if we do what we're supposed to be doing, I'm, I'm helping bring people to town, and we need to start new businesses downtown, parking's going to be even a worse issue then. So I think we have to have a little vision and figure out what we can do for parking in the future. Because we can't grow the downtown if we don't have a place to park. Okay, can I? Sure. Uh, with the ADA compliant, obviously that is state property. Okay. So, so the state for that? that that's state is Michigan Street is state from American to the railroad tracks and obviously state road ten going through town. Okay. The side road, side streets not are on us for ADA. Okay. The parking issue um, is a pain right now. I don't think anybody here is going to disagree with it plan for the parking area and the downtown area. We know start date, we know finish date. We don't know how the the contractor is going to, Hello, what section friend. they're going to do first, what yes. section they're going to do last, we don't know any of that. As far as the future, we will end up with, where you're talking, the uh, two straight parkings, we'll end up with nine parking spots there instead of the two. So down the road in the future, there will be more parking. Yeah, that could be six months away. It could be. I mean, I'm just saying, in, in the interim, I mean, well, I would be happy to pay somebody to come put the stripes in. But there's no way that we can allow nine parking spots there if they're going to be doing construction there. There's two there now. Well, and those will be blocked up, those, too. Yeah, I, I say, those talked to him marked. earlier today, so I talked to the engineer. Okay, Mark. So yeah. once they get into this, they're ripping this whole sidewalk out. All this will be replaced. So they're going to block along the roadway so you won't even be able to park there. Because they'll have that all blocked out, especially when they put this here. 
So I can't tell you when. So those parking spots that are there until they fence that off, by all means. Uh, I was up there earlier tonight, and they were across even the drives. And I don't think, Corey, I don't see an issue with that. No, I don't see an issue. Since they're, see I know it's not a parking spot, but I don't see where we're up there writing tickets. So we have they can been. probably get four or five cars in there now. And after okay. that, I don't really have an answer. I mean, this is going to take, they tell me, three months at the max. So we're hoping by 1st of December, middle of December, it'll at least be open. So, go ahead, Corey. So, as far as enforcement of the, of, of the parking downtown, if you look at the last month, I think I've talked to Mark about this, I've talked to you, there's only been a couple tickets, I think it was last month, none of those had to do <coughs> with bit parking for past business. None of them. I think there was two. They were wrote for violations that were 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm sure nobody's eating at past restaurant at 3 o'clock in the morning. Number two, this list month, there was a couple tickets wrote I wrote those tickets, I stand by those tickets, and I would do it again because it, it was it was a hazard. They were a rose hazard. If someone would have pulled out a Smith Street, you have the pictures. I mean, it was a total hazard. I had a complaint tonight of a truck parked in the inner towards the end of the intersection that was a hazard. If a semi would have come around through there. They're double part, double yellows. It, it would cause a, it would cause a, you know, it was in the way. Um, far as leniency, we have been doing that, so I would continue to keep doing what I have been doing. Okay. But Pat, I'm Pat, let me ask a question, Pat. What time do you open in the morning? We well, our business officially opens at six, but we have farmers that have keys to my business that go in at four thirty, four o'clock. So that, that's kind. Of, I think we're running into a little bit of a controversy there. In, in my opinion, um, I'm, I'm willing to enter a motion to adjust the legal parking times up there. We can't have this or that. Yeah, I mean, I was willing to go to 5:30 versus the six. I was thinking you opened at 5:30, but uh, I was mistaken. Sure. But you can't. That's what I'm talking. You, can, you, you cannot. You can't uh, just have you know, whatever time. I mean, we got to have a time because these guys can't be saying, "Well, it's gonna, do I write a ticket? Do I don't write a ticket?" I mean, you just. And obviously we can't allow semis double parked and I've lived in this town my whole life. My whole life. And I have never seen semis parked in downtown Argus. I've never seen cattle trailers parked in downtown Argus. I've never seen John Deere 4020s and double gravity wagons parked in downtown Argus. It just never has happened. Um, I grant it that people took advantage of having that empty lot over there. I get it. That was still private property. If somebody got hurt over there, there could have been some major liability issues on somebody's part. That's part of the reason the town's got blocked off, because we own it now. But I'm, I'm just trying to state the obvious here. I mean, it's a small town. There's not a lot of room up there I mean, to put an 80-foot long semi up there. I mean, anybody can see what happened the other morning. It was just, I mean, I was running out of my lane to get around with from somebody coming northbound. So now, I'll be honest tell you, I'm the one to call for and tell him to go look at it. Well, I, I wasn't there that morning. I can't tell you what that was like, but I'm it's just it just I just think that we need to look at parking in general. I won't disagree with that. But we can't expect to put a truck stop parking lot out here. Right, right. I understand that. But right now about the only place they could park is down in front of the park. And you know, so Pat, there's been vehicles double parked, uh, eating. We have a road, and they've been on down. Like I'm talking, like a pickup truck with a, a fifth wheel trailer. I haven't messed with those. I've only messed with the two semis that were messed with. Wrote a ticket because it was a hazard. The one semi was on the roadway, had his hazard lights on. The other one I rode it's been a while back was over the summer. It was a pickup truck with a livestock trailer who wasn't double parked. He was taking up about eight or nine spaces. One of them was a hand, handicap space on the end of the parking lot. I stand by those. Oh, I'll, I'll continue to do it. You, those are and like no one has messed with anybody. The time frames. No one's even wrote a ticket for anything past like four o'clock, and it wasn't. It had nothing to do with your business. That was. That's not what I'm hearing. That's, that's well. Fine. I mean, when your when your customers are yelling at me for walking up to a semi, I well, mean, apparently they don't they don't know what's going on. Well, I. There, 
it just has seemed to just gather fuel as it keeps going and going. I wonder where that's coming from. Not for me. I don't know. And, and why am I getting attacked by customers verbally? Well, they talked about it all day. Okay, I'm saying. We're getting out of it. I don't know. I guess we, we understand there's a problem with parking. And yes, you and I talked about that. And like I said, I don't tell the police department what to do. Um, we're going to back Corey with this, like we said. It's up to Corey if it's unsafe. Granted, they've been very lenient in the whole town with the two with the two hour parking and that during this. Uh, very much so. So, duly appreciate your concerns, and they are a concern. And we are, we're trying to work on it, obviously, to get more parking spots. And even when this was done in the back, you can see there'll be more. There'll be a long spots on the east side that you're you can get a couple pickup trucks with trailers in there. Now, granted, semis aren't going to be able to park in there. But I was thinking the same thing, George. Oh, so that, so yes, in, in the future you're going to gain some spots there. Yeah, I mean that's only a couple. I mean that's not very far from your door. Right. I mean I can see trucks and livestock trailers on that <coughs> side there. I, you know I, I can see that. But yeah, I don't. I, I don't. I have Edward George. I don't see semis being that far. Now, yeah. I see the big parking lot up there. Excuse what me? if somebody parked across the lines? On the big parking lot early in the morning. You mean on the road front here? Yeah, on the road on, on the east, west south side. On the south, south side. side. That's all parking lot. Yeah. I don't think they're going to get in there and get out. Stop the back. Not the semi. No, I'm not talking about semi. I'm just talking about trucks and trailers. Because there's a lot of times, like in forage time, when they do weigh-ins and stuff like that, that they stop in for breakfast and this and that. And you know, are we going to get in trouble with something can't, like that? I can't speak for. The police officers. I would say I would rather see them pull on the alleyway where those other well, streets are. Is to park along there. There's I'm not thinking good. maybe along that east edge. Pardon yeah. me here, Pat. I think along that east edge is there a possibility that you know, I know that's kind of earmarked and kind of got other things earmarked too. But there's nothing really dead set. It's a variable thing. Can we can we kind of like maybe draw a couple of? Um, I'm thinking like uh, when you go to a boat ramp, you got extended parking spots like for a truck and a trailer. That's what's going to be over there. Okay. Yeah, we have extended so lengths of spots. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, George, can, this is a thought. So we, Jamie did go down there and so south of 10, they covered all of the no parking signs. Right. So we, we allowed, we took away the parking hours so this is finished. Why? How, how did on. that happen? How did it happen? He went down and put things over top of the sign. Who authorized that? There was a miscommunication between Jamie and the police department. He called me and says, what do you think? I said, I don't have a problem with it during construction, but it never got relayed to Corey by Jamie. Or so. Well, I think that should have been a decision brought before this board to make, since that is by ordinance and no party. Shouldn't any one of us be making a decision like that on our own? Didn't make a decision. I told him I didn't care. I didn't say do it. It's a big difference. It's implied. Well, what, what I was going to say, Sean, give me just a second here. Since we've already did this, or somebody already did this, I shouldn't say we. Since it's already, that's been done, they didn't go north. Could we take and cover up those no parking signs? They did go north, and the bags are gone. No, he told me, I asked Jimmy. He said they were there last week, were they going? No, nope. oh, I did the south. There was oh, bags on the south. south. Yeah, there was no bags on north. So I thought could, I saw them on the north end. So, that could we take it off on the north side so in the morning those guys can park there? He has it enforced it anyway. No, well, I, I, I know he has it, but it just it makes it easier on him. Yeah. There is no bags on the north. Okay. Right. If I say can't can't we have them north. covered so that I'm just right. asking. Sure you can. That's up to you guys, but no one's no one's really. I mean, the people that park there for the, during those time frames is mainly the people who live in the apartments above the the restaurants and, and those buildings. I go to work at five thirty in the morning and I see a substantial amount of cars at the restaurant. Okay, okay. so I go and in. No I, I get that. Now, like I said, I was willing to change the time to maybe five thirty, but I was going to say, I like can't, you said, there has not been one ticket written up yeah. there. No, there any construction with bag or without a bag. I can't remember taking right, it was ready at five thirty for anybody to be parking from the restaurant. Mm -hmm. I I am not saying 
Nothing's been said to me about that other than one time. And that was it. But it's pretty easy to tell whether there are people in the restaurant or not. So. Well, well, I think everybody in this room is in, a, in agreement on parking during the construction right. other than unsafe. Right. I mean, that's uh -huh. what Corey's been doing now. Park the street. Nothing's yeah. changed. Nothing's changed. He's done what he's supposed to do. Or up to the very edge of an intersection with an 18 yeah. wheeler. You can't park it. So if up. you guys want to say abandon the parking down the parking ordinance downtown till after construction, that's totally up to you guys. I'll make a motion to abandon the parking ordinance. We're restricting parking from three to six in the morning for the duration of the downtown park construction with the exception of anybody parked unsafe next to an intersection or in a yellow zone still subject to being ticketed. Before I second that, Gary, I can look on your face. Did you yeah, say something? I mean, you can't say downtown. What in the world does that mean? You've got to define what streets, when, where, and... you got to no. say like between Smith um, and Williams, Walnut Street, and, yeah. and Smith Street, and... Would it be right? just easier to do away with... I'm sorry, Randy. Just to do away with the time limit? I mean, the, the well, six, eight, and three, we're easy. really not doing, yeah. it's not really an issue. It hasn't been an issue. I'll amend my motion to state between William Street and, what street is it? Smith, 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 Smith Street. Smith and Williams, first and Maple. First and Maple. Is this just the time? The time frame? And with no excuses, no illegal parking, no yellow parking. No intersection parking. Just the, the three to six a.m. Just the diagonal okay. parking. The three to six parking. Yeah. Is that your motion? That's my motion. I'll second that. There's a motion to not enforce the time parking and the parking between Smith Street and William Street and First Street and Maple Street on Michigan or State Road 10 during construction. Correct, and a second. With the exception of the well, we know the safe stuff. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> I'm just trying to. And just for the record, Pat has donated many, many, many items. To many, many people, food items to the fire department, and has been very active for, like he said, years in the community. So he's not just coming in here to complain. He's here for legitimately. I'm, uh, I'm telling you. So I've known Pat many, many years, and his son is my best friend. So I mean, I, I get it. I know there's an issue, yeah. and just trying to find a happy medium that we can friends? get through. Yeah, I have a couple. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other citizens input? Jan, you're probably going to get beat up on this one now. You should have went first. <laughs> I'm a little bit. Okay, I've written something out, so I want to read it. Okay. I'm old, and I don't want to get it. Okay. okay. And it concerns the cemetery. Okay. You know, we have all these beautiful parks. They always both look excellent. But I think our cemetery represents our town also. You have many of your people who built this town buried out there. It looks, it, it looks awful. But I know the guy had was sick. He had COVID. But I think maybe the town should have a little compassion and help him out. We have the lawn mats. We could have went out there on the weekends and helped him out. Not saying go out there and mow all day. Go out and mow maybe for a couple hours. Help him out. Also, we could have put on the Facebook, asked for volunteers to go out with the weed eaters and blowers and do that part for them because it is a big job. And the old part is awful to keep mowed. I, I understand that. But when somebody's hired to do that, they need to know um, what their job consists of. You know. They can't blow this grass all over the stones. That's, to me, that's unnecessary. And I know it's, it's hard, but it, they need to know that they can, it should not be done that way. And it can be done. So um, I want to know why there's no cemetery board. 
We are the cemetery board. Right? There is a cemetery you do? Board. I was told there isn't any. No, the town council is the cemetery board. Well, the town council is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and what money is allocated for the cemetery? The, we have a budget. I know uh, you got the budget. Cemetery. Adopted budget seventeen thousand six hundred, and the tax levy is three thousand. Seventeen thousand what? This year, seventeen thousand and three thousand. Right at twenty thousand dollars. And that's for upkeep. Pretty for, much well, for pretty much all that goes to mowing. And then, of course, you have your perpetual care, which is in there for headstone repair and those kind of things also. Okay. Um, when do you advertise that? It has been advertised, and tonight it gets passed on the third, second, third reading. It was passed no, on no, the I mean, reading. when do you advertise the job for, for more? We have a three-year contract, so when it comes up in that three years, then it's advertised. And when does that come up? I'd have to look. I don't remember off the top of my head. I think there's one more year. And I think we've discussed this that yeah. as if it wasn't the last meeting, maybe the meeting before, but that we may well be advertising for a new cemetery mowing contractor. So I think there's a I think their current contractor doesn't want to continue with the contract. So that's probably something we're gonna have to address here to address. Because I know somebody that'd be interested in it, so I'd like to let them know. The well, Lincoln always Put in and we would have it on record then when it comes bid time we would know to we could always contact whoever okay i mean that's just a courtesy thing but they really need to yeah pay attention to the to the notice to give the, the bid specs okay and it's all part of the meetings that we have here so it won't be anything secret. I don't get here often. I been and there is a contract which <clears throat> specifically states when they mow what they're how they're supposed to do it and up until this year, with this, with this man getting sick, it, it's been immaculate in the gas. Up till this year. This year, they, he got sick with COVID. They still lose grass on the stones. Yeah, but, um, yeah. but they did weed. Yeah. But he was always very meticulous about not going out there when it was wet and blowing it on the stones and making it ugly. And I mean, we've also tried, if you remember years past, to do it ourselves, and literally took. Two people, it forty a, hours a week to even it's a big keep job. it up. Yes, it is. To keep it up, and it was it was more cost effective to bid it out than it was for us to try to maintain and hire people to do it at that time. But in a pinch, they could. In a pinch, they could. In a pinch, they could. And yeah. can I say it was probably an oversight on our part? Well, obviously, yes. We actually looked at doing it, and we had nobody to spare. No. We had two large projects going on, and we had nobody to put out there. Well, so we actually did go out, Jamie and I went out, we looked at it, and we said if it's not done, if it's not at least mowed on Monday, we will try to get everybody around with our, all of our mowers and get out there. But we also had a large project and a large water project week going on that we were trying to take care of. And it would have been later in the week before we could have got to it, and he didn't have it mowed that weekend. So one, of them, he got a part-time guy to come in and mow it. Okay. Um, did we have anybody in town asked to do community service? That'd be, you know, not in this town. Nobody. Not in this town. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Pretty big cut. That'd be a good, Man. good deal for them. <laughs> Believe me, Jan, I've been here. On this board right now, this is my 15th year, and you have that same handful that does 99.9% .9 of the work, and they are burnt out. I know. <laughs> yeah. And then you yeah, got this, and you got this percentage and... over here that want to sit home on Facebook and bitch that don't want to do anything but that. So, if you want to be that percentage, don't come in here and complain. <laughs> That's a good quote. And you're not complaining. I love you to death, and you guys both like come that. in here with valid points. I wish I'd have thought of what you just said, and it would have been cleaned up. So, yeah. Yeah. where were we at two months ago? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Derek, Derek is correct. We we uh, discussed this two meetings ago. 
about the cemetery contract. Right. I would expect to see that uh, coming up for a bit. At see. some point, maybe not next meeting, but I mean before, obviously, okay. the next meeting. I'll, I'll, I'll let the gentleman know. They come and please name in. Good. It's local. Anyone else? You were done, right? I'm done. Okay. But well, thank you. Why, why Pat still here? Pat, I also wanted to add something that um, it's awful dark here in the morning in front of your place, and I have asked Jamie to brighten up them corners there because <clears throat> I've almost had people cross in front of me in the morning. I've almost hit because I didn't see them. Okay. It's really dark there. So I just want to let you know that I have asked Jamie to look into, and that might be part of this bigger project here, making that corner a little brighter. We're getting new street lights. So, so, I but I did want to let you know that, man. It's not that we don't know that you're there and we do care about your business. I just, you know, I've got a, I've got a whole bunch of customers i got to look at and say, hey, I did my best. And tell, him when, tell him Wednesday nights, first and third Wednesdays at 7.30. Okay. <laughs> and we'll, we'll tell them the same thing we just told you. So. I mean, I've heard everything. But they're... You know, their, their safety is just as important to me as their parking is getting right. across that street. So I wanted you to know that that uh, I have asked for brighter intersection. We also like pie. Just sit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <Nepotism>. Okay. <laughs> Attorney report. I'd like to say I don't have a lot, but we do have a few things we've got to kind of tackle and address tonight, guys. First thing is uh, Situation, we've got ongoing litigation at 326 West Church Street with Mr. Mora. If you remember, we had let that out for bids one time. We got no bids, and we let it out for bids another time. I think it was back in September. It was published, or the, the, the bid specs were published September the 2nd. It looks like we now have one bid. So I'm going to open that bid. And it says that it was received September 27th. Bids were due October the 4th, which was Monday. So the bid is timely. It's from Kohler Construction Incorporated. Fool born every day. You guys are going to be all right. We'll see if we like it. Appreciate your time. Thanks, man. Thanks, Pat. Appreciate you coming in. And it is. It's a bid from Kohler Construction Incorporated. To basically comply with the order from the court, they have submitted a bid for $14,260. So, Dean, you're here tonight. You're the bidder. What? Uh, anything else to say? Nothing to say. No, I just had concerns when I called. I talked to Derek a little bit. Um, I can tell they've tried to clean some of the stuff up, but there's a lot of there's like a blue awning. I don't know. It's is that supposed to be removed? I haven't gotten really any information because if that comes down then whatever's inside of it i'm sure is going to have to go somewhere and i haven't got any clear direction on where that's what all i have to get rid of that's why i think i have been there that uh, during the time that we do it an officer needs to be present um, not only for our safety because people live there but to kind of let us know what all needs to go um, it's pretty vague in the in the terms of the the case and he's right to be honest, it is, and I'll be honest, you know, we don't know what's under the blue tarp, okay? I mean, it could be a pile of marijuana, who knows? Um, but we simply don't know what's involved with getting all this stuff done, but we do know that there's plenty of stuff left to be done pursuant to the court's order. There's vehicles, I think, that are supposed to be, if they're impounded, they're simply supposed to be removed from the property. Um, so it's, I, I understand, if you're a contractor, you really don't know exactly what all you're getting into out there. And I think not only law enforcement, but I think somebody from the council ought to probably be there to help kind of guide and indicate what they think is a violation of town and ordinances. Because that's what the order says, basically comply with the ordinances. 
yes, I think Corey can do a fair job with that, but I, I think also that there, I think it would not be out of line to have somebody from the council there as well to directly kind of discuss things as you encounter them. I would volunteer to do that. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate I'm, it. I'm also, but I'm, that we're That's so fine. far away. I'm here to do that. Is, is there a, do we have some kind of a scope or, or exactly what we're supposed to do? Well, I'm, I'm going to take a picture. I've mm -hmm. got a photograph. Okay. Okay. That's about what there is. Um, the ones that, we, that were presented to the court? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yes, and I mean, you can see there, there's the big blue tarp front and center. There's another tarp that's in the front of the house. And there's, I see more tarps. And there's a dune buggy. Um, there's, I'll call it trash in the front yard. There's trees that are basically on the house or next to the house. Uh, very side of that blue tarp. And again, okay. I think that some of this stuff has been addressed, possibly. But to what extent? I don't know. Could it be worse than when these photographs were taken back in March of this year? Yeah, it could be worse. It could be better. Uh, but the order from the court says bring it into compliance with the town code of ordinances. Well, I'm also aware there's a lot of feral cats there. Are we responsible for seeing we're not messing with, removed? We're not messing with cats. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we cleaned up some of the cats. Around. Well, unfortunately dispersed under your help, right? Okay, there's an, only one bid. One bid. I'll make a motion to approve the bid from Kohler Construction to clean up the, I do not know the address of the property on Church Street, but that is the case. 326 Church Street. Is there a second? I'll second that. There's a motion and a second to accept the bid from Kohler Construction for the cleanup on Church Street. Any other discussion? Not all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Dean. You're welcome. Whenever Thank you. you ready to do that, Dean, before you leave, I'll give you my phone number and he's calling. I just down the Westview Court. So. Sounds good and I'll be in contact with Corey. I'll get, I'll get that schedule. Okay. Maybe one that we can come in there and do it. All right. You have my direct line. Yeah, you have to get that big tree off the top of that tarp first. On that one. It's <laughs> a mess. Next, Eric. Next. All right. This is a fun one. <laughs> the town has been identified, and basically it's real estate that the town owns, which we're going to talk about again here in a little bit. But specifically the police station, that real estate has been uh, tagged with a, it's called a common law lien. Okay? And it was filed by. The House of Graver, a gentleman by the name of Paul Albert Graver, filed this lien in the amount of thirty-one million and some odd thousand dollars. It's hard to read because I was a pretty lousy copy. But nevertheless, he's filed a lien against town property, which between everybody here in the room, it's an invalid lien. Okay, but when the recorder in our county or any county is, is confronted with this, so long as the paperwork. Uh, complies with what they with what they have to have to accept. They've got to make the recording. So it shows up. Any judgment and title search that would be run on this property would show. Well, there's a lien, thirty-one million some odd thousand dollars. So the question is, what do we do with it? And again, it's a totally bogus lien. All right. The, the documentation uh, stems from an incident where I think a Argus police officer arrested. Mr. Graber, because of an outstanding warrant here in Marshall County, took him to jail, and he spent, I don't know what period of time in jail, but he did, and he also filed a lien against the county and the county jail, and so they're dealing with that also, and I'll get to that in a minute. But at the end of the day, he's placed a lien on these two properties, and he's alleged that in his court, um, it's called the Private Administrative Court of the House of Graber, well, the, by golly, he has a judgment, okay, for $31 million. So he's filed a lien based on that judgment. And it's nothing more than just his own made-up, fabricated assessment of what he thinks uh, would be appropriate damages for, he calls it kidnapping, um, a bunch of other nonsense. Um, but he's got all that in this lien. I know that uh, I sent you guys an email yesterday. The county's aware of this, too. And the county intends to basically 
contest the lien, it's through what we would call a quiet title action, okay, which basically means we would file suit in court against Mr. Graber and the House of Graber, whoever else we need to, uh, saying that this is an invalid, uh, bogus lien, and get a judgment that in essence extinguishes the liens and hopefully would allow us for a judgment, a legitimate judgment, to have attorney fees recovered. Now, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but I'll just tell you that when you're, when you're dealing with somebody like this, you got to remember you're dealing with somebody like this, okay? So at the end of the day, it is something that probably should be addressed. I sent you guys an email that I got from Jim Clevenger, who's the county attorney. I sent that just yesterday. I just got it yesterday. Um, this is all just kind of coming to light because it just happened last week. But he's of a mind, or basically the county's of a mind, to go ahead and initiate suit to extinguish this lien. It's my recommendation that we join in that, in essence, work with the county, and we can kind of probably consolidate some time and expense on that um, and, and move this forward. Just for a little bit of side note, you'll see in my email, this happened to our county prosecutor uh, about two years ago, and he had to go through this process as well, and he was successful, of course, in, in having that lien uh, extinguished and getting a judgment in his favor, but again, once you get that judgment, you have to make that decision, well, what do we do with it? And again, we'll cross that bridge down the road, but I will warn you, that based on the history of Mr. Graver here, that it could well be that myself or that any council member may wind up with some kind of a lien on their personal property. He may, or not personal property, I'm sorry, real property. He may well do it again. I don't know. We can't control that. We can't stop that. But we can basically say we're not going to put up with it. Okay? So that's where this is at. It's one of those, one of those things you just kind of Shake your head and say, we've got to deal with this. Uh, we've got to do the best we can with it. But I do think that we need to address it. And it does, it may, I should say, affect what's going on with the end dot purchase of the very small parcel. We're going to pick that up next. But it may have some ramifications there, too. OK? But at the end of the day, it's my recommendation that we do uh, kind of join with the county and contest this lien and not let this stand. That's an informal like motion. Yeah. I have a question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I understand where you're coming from, Jerry. Uh, and, and all this, but if he comes after us individually, like you're saying, in our real property, who defend? Does the town defend us at that point? Would you be defending us in that cases to do the same thing? Or in your official capacity as a town council member, I would. I would tell the council that yes, it should be the responsibility of the town to basically pursue that and extinguish that lien if something like that would develop as well. The, the hope here is eventually Mr. Graber may get the picture that you can't just go around doing this and if push comes to shove, he's already got one judgment against him that is a valid lien. He may well wind up with another with this. But if there's enough of those, we can move to do things like foreclose on houses and sell property and things like that. In other words, make life kind of rough for him. Those are pretty extreme measures, and we hope we don't have to go that far. But if he meets fire with fire, then we may have to take those steps. But I would just say, we'll see what comes and see what develops. Um, but yes, it would be my interpretation that if any one of you uh, as town council members have wind up with a lien because you're on Argus Town Council and you voted sure. to do this, then I would say we're in the same boat and yeah, do the same, take the same steps. But I think we may have to get a little more serious at that point. Well, I'll make a motion to allow uh, Derek to, to join in with uh, Mr. Cliff Clevenger and the Marshall County with the Marshall County lawyer and on, I don't want to say this, work on the, getting this lien removed from the House of Draper against uh, the EMS building. No motion and a second to partner up with the county on this court. 
case. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. One more, just just a bit of clarification. There was an individual police officer name on the lien, but I do not believe that his real estate was identified in the lien itself. No, and I have checked at the the um, Fulton County at, at the recorder's office, and myself, nor Rodney has been at that time. I need to keep checking. I guess this is the same guy. If you remember, I talked about the insurance claim. Oh yeah. But no, not not at this moment. I don't think so. And, and that's something to consider. I really haven't, but you're right that we did talk about her. You this is what I said. Would you re represent us on that? Insurance. And, and yeah, I'm happy to do it, but it's just, a town. It's a, and it's, it's I would a hope someone to would. It's a town that really the town shouldn't be responsible for. But I think at the end of the day, yeah, we'll get a judgment at least for the attorney fees. But what do you do with it? That's again, steps down the road. But I. I think it may be worth having a discussion for me to have a discussion with the liability carrier for the town to see if there's any it's called that they have a duty to defend okay so in other words if a, if a police officer truly did do something wrong and got sued we have liability insurance to cover that well there's an allegation that a police officer did something wrong by serving an arrest warrant and does that duty to defend extend to that and I, I again I think that's worth looking at this may take a long time to get resolved, but I, I do think that I ought to have that discussion with the liability carrier, probably Clevenger as well, to see if he thinks there's any coverage on the county's part, to see if, again, I, I don't want to incur additional expense on the part of the town, and so if we can kick it to a liability carrier and say, you guys messed with this guy, I'm happy to do it. But I'm also, I don't have any problem moving forward with the county, uh, if that's what we need to do. Something he's saying. Derek, if, if I can, the insurance company called me. They denied his claim on the basis that he had no right to file it because the House of Braver was filing it for someone else. Sure. So. And I get that, but then again, I, I guess it's one of the situations we don't want to just sit around with a lien. You no, know, absolutely not. I wouldn't want it on my property. Right. So if it's okay with the council, again, I'll, I'll kind of look into those avenues as well. I'll report back to you when I get more information, but I'm clear that right now the motion that was pretty I feel that's part of that motion that yeah. you're just gonna do what you guys do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would back Georgia one more. We will, we will take care of it one way or another. The last thing that I have is concerning that very same piece of real estate that there's now a lien against, um, an invalid lien, but there is, and that's concerning. We talked last time about the purchase from NDOT. We made a, a motion to approve their offer to pay $1,000. They're getting uh, 20.15 square feet. So we're talking about a very, very small piece of real estate. And I, I wish Mr. Burke were still here, but they are putting in an ADA compliant uh, sidewalk ramp. So maybe that's a, a sign of things for the future that they're progressing with that or doing more with that. But at any rate, I do have a resolution. If the resolution is passed, it basically it's approving that offer to sell the real estate for $1,000 to NDOT. Um, it's also authorizing George to execute any and all other necessary documentation to effectuate that transfer. But again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step back just a little bit and if you remember, we talked about that we've got an issue there with that property that it's technically owned by the Argus Emergency Services Building Corporation. And so I've also prepared a deed to convey it from that entity back to the town. I've also prepared an affidavit that I'll let you take a look at here in a little bit. But it basically explains that they're basically an entity or a department or an agency of the town, and they were when it was created. That, that entity was administratively dissolved back in 2003, I think it was. Hold on, I'll give you a really good date. Dissolved in 93, I'm sorry, so 20 some odd years ago it was dissolved. And they still own that real estate in, in title. So what we're gonna try to do first is convey the real estate back to the town. Once that's occurred, then we have additional documentation here that will convey 
just that small piece of real estate and the easement to in that for them to be able to put in that ADA compliant rate. So the resolution gives the approval to that transaction. It also gives the authority for George uh, to sign documents necessary to effectuate not only the transfer, but that conveyance to in that. It's resolution 2021-10. Um, I don't think that that's probably in your packets. I just talked to Corey about that today, and it was my fault I did not get that to anybody ahead of the day. No. If you guys want to take a look at it, please. was to put those five parcels together police station and five parcels all in one and then over on the other side where the Quonset hut is there's four parcels there and the resolution there was to pass the variance um, with all four of those parcels being combined so I would think you probably need the attorney to do that did you catch all that there what parts of that and I understand there's a variance, but is there a resolution or an ordinance, I should say, that we would need to grant or adopt that? Well, they passed the variance last night, and we, don't, we haven't put it into the minutes or anything like that, so, but that's what it was um, based on, was to go ahead and have those five parcels put together at the police station and the four parcels put together at the Quonset Isn't that a county function? No, no, the property belongs to us. What we need to do is combine those um, four Which parcels in the plan. means, how do we combine them? With the legal description. Total meets and bounds around us. Yes. Okay, where we need a survey for that? No, you don't need a survey for that. Survey is already done. And, and you can, and I can do that as the town administrator. I can sign off on that. On the combination, if it's a split, splitting a parcel, it has to go before um, the plan commission. But on a combination, I can sign off on that. I don't, I don't know why that would matter one way or the other. Be a bad thing to do necessarily. I will say though that you understand that right now we've got that the police station. There's two locks there. They're really not in the name of Argus. Yet. Right, I know. We may run into some pushback with the way this deed's fashioned and our affidavit that George is going to sign, they may not like that, but mm -hmm. we'll find out within the next couple of weeks. Well, I would say, you know, once that's done, then the next step is combine those and then combine the ones on the other side. Because we can't build across property lines. Right. And so we've got so to get this out of there. And, you know, we've got to get that out of there so we can do our new construction. I don't hear a problem with what he's proposing. Mm -hmm. it to me, it may be more clean cut when you yeah. build it everything yeah. else. I mean, Where is this one parcel instead of trying to track five different ones down? <coughs> We're going to have to okay. back out again. It comes back in front of the now, plan commission. So with all this, you have 
two parcels the building's on now. We're de dealing with the deed with that. Now we have a claim we get a lien against it. Does that jeopardize and get this? Do you want to combine all those until all this is done? If I had a concern about that lien being valid, then that may be a different issue. You know, and, and even so, the, the lien itself has the legal meets and bounds description, and it's only those two lots. And again, to be honest, the, the lien is against the quote town of Argus, but again, right now, title is held in the name of the Argus Emergency Building or Argus Emergency Services Building Corporation. So it, it's, it's invalid on so many different levels that it's just ridiculous. I don't, I don't have any concern about that. Okay. So how's that process work? Do you just rewrite the legal description and then have recorded it to the county or the daughter has to do it? Or? I, I do think there does need to be a meets and bounds description of the entire parcel. That right. Somebody said we have that. They, the surveyors have come down and surveyed it and they have the legal description. I actually think the county has it, all this information, the okay. recorder's office, but they can't do anything until... Isn't it an Our application process there as well that you just say, I want to combine parcels? Well, yeah, I want to combine them. I sign off on that and then go get it recorded. And so you kind of had to wait till last night when they approved their part for Chuck to sign off on his part before it goes to the right. next part. So it, 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 it would amount right. to a new legal description in essence. Uh, it, it's not so much a new deed, but it's just a new legal description for five parcels right. to become one. Right. So is, is that something that your office then prepares the, the legal documents for, Eric, or we need a title company to do that? No. It sounds like the survey's been done that provides the legal, it's called the meets and bounds, where it's basically a, you travel 183 feet this way and you, and you turn uh, 0 0.9 degrees this way. It, you know, it's, it's all that mumbo jumbo yeah. that when you look at it, it's like, I don't know what they're talking about. That's a legal description, and it's a silly name because attorneys don't know what it means either. But that is providing basically the, the bearing, the compass bearings, and the feet of the boundaries of that property. And once that's been established through a survey, which apparently has already been done, then you know the outer boundary of those five parcels as compared to just one or two or however many. So once you've got that, then you're good to go to basically file the application to say we want to combine all five of these parcels into one. That's what Chuck is basically saying that you can take care of that. It's just the application process. And then the county assessor would recognize five parcels now as just simply one parcel. This is what they've got through the surveyor. This gives this to the police station length here, across, back down. So that would be one, and then this one here comes up. So it's kind of broken up because of the alley. Well, yeah, there's an alley that goes between it, but that will be gone. We still want to do that, so that's what we're going to do. You're not going to get one parcel, though, the alley. No, I don't want one parcel, but two parcels. Two parcels. Right, because we can't have a parcel that goes across an alley right, right, or right. across the road. So we'll have one for the police station, one for Tell me your motion to let Derek go ahead and proceed with the legal documentation for the combination of the parcels. Well, and again, I don't know there's much for me to do. It's really That's fine, but Chuck, whatever, whatever you need to do with Chuck and the county to get it done. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? If not, there's a motion to allow Drake to work with Chuck and the county to get these parcels taken care of. For legal description, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, guys. I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt the attorney's report, but. Fell right into place, though. I thought it was important. And I'm done anyway. So, motion to accept the attorney's report. There's a motion and a second to 
accept the attorney's report. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Ordinance 21-13 budget for 2022, second and third reading. Is there a motion? Make a motion to pass ordinance 2021-13 budget for 2022 on the second and third reading. Second, Pat. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Not all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I should have said so I'm abstained because I can't vote. Sorry. Sign it, mark A, nay, or abstain, please. So we voted. And while you're doing that, resolution 2021-09 power tracker. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution 2021-9 power tracker. Second it. Motion is second to adopt resolution 2021-09 power tracker. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Sign all these while we're talking about it. She takes up the whole page from kitchen. <laughs> Her name is like this big. She does it on purpose too because she's right away. So, all y'all. You know, in school, when they had them big capsules like that, the light about the size of your finger, she cut use them because it looked like a coloring book. Not true. <laughs> I colored in the lines. <laughs> Thank you. That, that's why your mark went all the way through mine. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Look. Doc Angie. Give me enough space, I'll use it all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You're welcome. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you want it? No. Here, she can have all us and put her in that. She just put it in there and keep that whole orange. Just put it off in this hole. Okay, Laura, you're up on the approach uh, time clock. Yes. Okay. Um, Lisa had asked me to do um, some research on the new time clock program for um, the town employees of our territory and the um, police. And so what you've got is a summary of a couple of the people, the, the two beds that we found um, to go through. <clears throat> We're less than 50 employees, so it's an entry-level program, which is um, kind of the cheapest one you can go through. Uh, we do have a file data share, so we'll be able to upload directly into BSNA, which is our payroll software. Uh, that will definitely take some um, pressure off of Candy as far as what she needs to put in. Um, scheduling is included. It'll be a, uh, an app on a phone, um, so they can um, punch in and out. Uh, the company will geofence um, the location where we allow the punching in and out. Um, so when they come in, they punch in, they go to lunch, they punch out, they come back, they punch back in, and then they go home. We'll also be able to set up a, like a small laptop or regular computer for someone who uh, doesn't want to use their phone. Um, and that saves us the cost of a time clock. So there's a, a significant saving there. Um, there is a, an additional fee uh, for the first first year. As far as getting all the setup, they come in, do a, take a look at all of our benefits. They will track our vacation, holiday, sick, all that's on there. Uh, the employees will be able to access the um, app from anywhere. So if they want to do time off requests, they can do them from the living room if they like. But they can only punch in and out uh, within the geofenced area. Um, so if they're wanting to put in a vacation day or they get sick, they can apply for that sick. That sends an alert to the supervisors. They now go in to, to take a look and see to approve, not approve, um, which will also make it a little bit easier when we start tracking um, vacations, holidays, and it kind of puts a little bit more responsibility back on the employee to make sure things getting tracked the way they would like to have it tracked as it goes through. Um, the company that has the best fit, and actually both companies, uh, Ascentis and Andrews, uses the same uh, program, it's Novatime. And Ascentis is actually, Novatime is their program, 
and Andrews buys it from them and sells it, which is why we're getting a better price. So we're actually getting it directly from the manufacturer. Um, there's a $1,500 setup fee for the first year. Uh, the program fee is $23.17 per year. Um, so the first year uh, it will be $38.17 and then $23.17 um, every year after that unless we happen to go over 50 employees, in which case we'll have to take a look at where we are. Um, and then uh, Lisa said that would be divided out between seven departments. So each department would pick up seven of the cost. Uh, we're getting kind of close to the deadline if you want a January 1 start date. Um, we would need to have um, the contract signed and get ready so they can start coming out and having meetings with us. And they would like to have at least uh, two full payrolls that we can do back-to-back um, -back payrolls at the same time to make sure there aren't any issues with uh, anyone's time or anyone's uh, salary. We're, pretty, we're going to be pretty close to that 50. I'm sorry? With the fire territory. Not with employees that clock in. Right. They won't, that's this won't be volunteer. Be this won't be track of volunteers. This will be all just oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. part time and scratch it. Yeah. Okay. Lisa asked me to speak on this just a little bit as well. Um, this is some of us up here use this software, although it's a different company. Um, I got a bit. I was skeptical at first when they introduced it at my work, but it's pretty nice, pretty handy. It works pretty reliably. I go in and I schedule my vacations, it's really nice. You can go around, you can look at the schedule, see who's off, who's when, so when you're planning. Um, I know it made our HR department uh, a lot more efficient with updating. You know, when you take a vacation and it seemed like it was taking forever to, so you knew how many hours you had left after that. Hmm. It, it sped all of that up. Um, these companies, I wasn't familiar with the names. Uh, so I, I quizzed Lisa a little bit on them, and you know, these aren't the ones we're used to, you know, Paylocity or the other one, but the reason that they are with this one is uh, this particular one has a direct connection to BSNA through that file upload, which is very valuable. Um, so with that being said, I'd make a motion to approve the Ascentus quote for First year fee of thirty eight seventeen and the annual cost after implementation of twenty three seventeen. I'll second that motion. First, first. There's a motion and a second to accept the census time. Out bid. One question. Will this say Doug has X amount of days vacation. Will this be when they go to go into it? Because I run into this problem with the one I'm on. I have X amount of vacation days, but I can't put them all in for the whole year because it's based on hours earned. Is that the way this is? Get what I'm saying? Um, they can set it up so that we either you front load your vacation at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. or you crew it as you go. Mm -hmm. um, currently, um, we front load everything at the beginning of the year. Okay. So then they'd be able to see that. What it also does is it shows what you've taken mm -hmm. versus what's been approved. Right. So even if you haven't taken it yet, it won't let, it'll give you an, uh, um, an error if you try to take more than what you're eligible for. That's, that's the way ours works. That's why I wonder if that's the same day so I can understand the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I guess I should have said there's a lot more than, than just time part of vacation on this. Yeah, it's a lot. Yes. I mean, it's, it, you can, I don't know if this is a way you try to track your retirements and all that kind of stuff with the two weeks left. Um, eventually, if that's something that we would like to look at, yeah. but we're just using the basic one up front just to see how, how it works out. But yeah, you'll be able to do a lot of it. Yeah. Ours, we've got our handbook on there, our whole benefit package, our retirements, everything's on our own. Okay, does anyone else have any other new business? Mark? We ordered a table. Oh, yeah. March. A big table? Big table in March. 
We ordered a new table. You're over there, probably. So. Not chairs. Uh, Thank we you. didn't get that far. We'll let you pick those. Chuck, do you have anything since you're here? Don't think so. We did the uh, approval last night at the Planning Commission meeting on the, um, what do we call that part? The, the field meadows. We, yeah, we approved the preliminary plan for the plat. deer field meadows. So we've got that started, and uh, we're going to grab Derek before he leaves so we got our next steps in the process. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so You guys got anything back there, Department Head, since you're here? Okay. Claims, September 11th, 2021 through October 4th, 2021. Who's going to read that? Sean is. He's, he's already there, so he's clear. I got to get it turned right away first. <laughs> no, I had to do that too. <laughs> Docket for 10 6 2021. Total check register was $411,273.14. Payroll number 19 for $46,975.47. Payroll number 20 for $48,672.09. For total docket of $506,920.70. Any questions for Secretary Sean? Yeah, right. <laughs> Any questions on the uh, claims docket? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody make a motion? No. no. I make that motion. See, I was wondering what I was going to get for anybody corrected me, but they caught it themselves. <laughs> Erica makes a motion. Second. In a second. Sean's a second. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Motion adjourned. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's Wednesday, Opposed? you know what that means. I shut this off. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Wrestling. Sean. Sean made the motion. Sean made the motion. Wednesday, you know what that means, guys. Yeah.